Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the ODP. I am your host, Vanessa, with our other host, Ashley, who breaks my heart and never writes the fanfics I want. Hello! <laughs> How does it feel to break my heart? I mean, I, I do it pretty frequently, so... Mm, I should be used to it. I should be used to it. How, how are you doing? Um, long time, though. No talk. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I was, like, sick and dying. Like, I passed out. It was great. Yeah, she literally passed out. She she texted me, and she was like, yeah, I passed out. And, like, what did you say, in the emergency room? No, I was in the waiting room in a walk-in clinic. Oh, waiting room. It was great. <laughs> and the receptionist was like, okay, next. And I was like, bitch, I'm dying. <laughs> like, I feel like if anything serious had happened, I could sue for malpractice because <laughs> of that person. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it, my gosh. But, yeah, so Vanessa wasn't feeling well. Um, I wasn't really feeling well either. I actually went to the doctors, and I haven't gone to the doctors in, like, ten years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you hit that's someone. How, like, that's how, like, completely, like, ugh, I was feeling. And then that same week, I had gotten into a car accident. She ran someone over. No. Literally, it was the stupidest thing ever. Like, a couple cars in front of me stopped. The people in front of me stopped. I had to stop. And then the person behind me couldn't stop in time and, like, hit me in the back of the car. It really wasn't that hard. But, but you were um, shook? Huh? Were you shook? I mean, that was... That happened... It didn't happen because I was sick. It was happening because of other cars. Yeah, but you were shook, though, I'm guessing. Like, you were rattled. Oh, no, not really. I was more pissed because we were supposed to go to the movies <laughs> <laughs> after I was done work. And, like, it took me an hour more to get done at everything because we had to wait for the damn cops. We had to, you know, wait for all that shit. And it's just Exchange like. Exchange insurance shit. Oh, yeah. Do you have insurance? Yeah. What's your insurance? Yeah, no, uh, I went to the doctors today and got blood work done. And now I'm doing the worst thing that I could ever do, which I love to eat. <laughs> and I'm now going on a monthly fasting thing. Like what? So, you know, like the intermittent fasting where you like eat only eight hours out of the day? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, like so I'm you doing... wait and then you have a period of time where you eat yeah. and then you don't eat again until that yeah. next time. So I'm doing the 16 to 18, so 16 hours of the day I don't eat, and then I eat between 1 and 9 p.m. Oh. I have to do that for a month and then go back and see my doctor to see if I, it's saving me. Huh. So that's fun. <laughs> so if, if there's no podcasts in the future for a bit, it's because I've died. Oh, because I'm starving. For a bit, we would never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can come back to life, just saying. <laughs> Just saying. But, um, and then also, my computer went down. I think it was last weekend. My computer completely died on me. Oh, yeah. So I thought I lost everything. And I did lose my, um, video editing thing. Oh, no. But I got a new one. And it's even a better version, so. You got a new laptop? No, a better video editor. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> My, no, because I had to, like, restore my whole computer back to its uh, factory settings. Ew. Yeah. So, I lost... I didn't really lose anything, actually. But I, I did lose my video video editing thing. Oh, okay, okay. I got you. I got but you, But I was able to... Alright, so today's episode is Mail Code Blue. And it's the last episode of the first season. And... I can't believe we got here. <laughs> yeah, it took a while. Like, it what was it? 10 e it was 15 episodes, and it took us, like, half a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I mean, you know, I expected it to be longer. Same. I expected us to, like, stop after, like, three. <laughs> oh, man, it's just so... Because that's just us. <laughs> yeah, it's like, cool, we did two in a row, let's take a whole year off. <laughs> but um okay so Milko blue the summary for that episode is casey likes derek's best friend sam who has feelings for casey too derek is opposed to relationship between his best friend and his stepsister so he tries to sabotage the possibility of them coming together by informing sam of the male code blue which is where a guy's 
best friends cannot date their siblings. And yes, step-siblings count. Step-siblings count because they're totally siblings. (laughs) So this episode starts with them all at dinner and Sam is there. And right away, my first complaint is that everyone's kind of sitting in the wrong seat. Yeah, because, yeah, it's, everything's fucked up, because Sam's there, like, hmm. But why does it have to change that dramatically just because Sam's there? You know he got to sit beside his BFF. Okay, but I don't even think Edwin, was he even sitting where he was supposed to be sitting? Like, it just didn't make any sense. What, wait, was it, was it like Derek, Sam, Edwin, George, like Marty, Lizzie, Casey, Nora? I think Lizzie was right next to Nora. And then it was Sam, and then it was Derek, then George, Marty, Edwin, Casey. So basically, Casey switched seats with Derek, but then Derek switched seats with Lizzie. And <laughs> this is too hard. It's too just, complicated. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why they just didn't have like Edwin move so that like he was next to so Sam was next to Derek. But, I don't know. They uh, had to, they had to make it so like Derek and Sam were face uh, facing, not Derek and Sam, <laughs> Casey and Sam were facing each other because of the tension. Ooh. They still would have been facing each other the same way, basically. But whatever. So they were all in like the wrong seat and everything. And then so Nora asked Edwin like, "Oh, any news on the crush?" And Casey, like, weirdly coughs, and Sam is acting all weird, too, because they don't realize, I guess, they're talking about Edwin's crush. Like, they're just making it very obvious that they have a crush on each other. I just feel like it's awkward that something your parents would say. They'd just be like, how's the crush? (laughs) (laughs) And so, they start, you know, Edwin starts talking about this girl, and Derek's all, Edwin, you know, you have to play the field. And Edwin's like, Derek, I hate baseball. I mean, truth. (laughs) I hate baseball, too. No, I don't. I love it. No, I was going to say, what the hell are you talking about? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I do love baseball. I hate it at the same time, just because, like, (laughs) please start right now. And, like, it's just so dramatic, all the contracts. And, oh, I don't make enough. Let me pay you $300 while everyone else in the world is dying. (laughs) They do get ridiculously high salaries. Hashtag Bryce Harper. (laughs) That is ridiculous. No one needs that amount of money. No, they don't. But at least it was for a while. (laughs) So then Derek is all, you know, saying that Edwin shouldn't stick to one girl. And then he tries to rope Sam into agreeing with him. And then Casey is all like, well, no, it's all right if Edwin wants to stick to one girl if he likes her. And then she was like, right, Sam? Like, she's trying to rope in Sam for her side. She's just, like, looking and at Sam's him. And Sam's just like, uh, <laughs> both of you are right. <laughs> the guy is so dumb. I can't stand him. Well, it's not so much that he's dumb. He's it's just that he has, one, he doesn't have any backbone. And two, no, he like, he is just, like, a, a doormat. He just goes low. That's not good sometimes. Like, he wants to make Casey happy just because he likes her, but at the same time, on an, any normal basis, like, outside of this, he's doing whatever Derek wants. He's, like, mm-hmm. a mama's boy, but for Derek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. It's just, yeah. I mean, whatever Derek wants, Derek gets. Then Edwin asks Sam if he has a girlfriend. And he's like, oh, no. And then Marty, just out of the blue, says she wants Sam and Casey to crush on each other. And of course, <laughs> Sam spits out his drink. <laughs> yeah, fuck. it's just so, I feel like that's so forced. Like, this is me saying this, but I'm not a fan of Sam and Casey, so I think it's really I, forced. I, I don't think it's, ugh. I don't really like it either. It's just blah to me. I think it's garb. Especially this episode, just felt like it came on like full force yeah it did because like we knew casey liked sam for a little bit it Mm -hmm. was like evident in a couple episodes and like you could see that maybe like sam was like maybe interested but in this episode it just like really comes out of nowhere that he just seems to like really like her yeah no he didn't he kind of showed interest and everything but this is like over the top now (laughs) yeah 
George then, because of what Marty said, George makes a remark that it's not cool for best friends to go out with their siblings. And Derek agrees. Of course he does. While he's giving, like, this, like, side eye to Sam. Like, yeah. It's funny, though, is how he, like, does that. And then he's, like, yeah. he, he, like, knows. But then he's just, like, super shocked later on when he's, like, Oh, well, yeah, I know. <laughs> you actually do? <laughs> like, you fucking know. He, Derek is in such denial. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, he can see it. And he's just, like, maybe that's something I should keep an eye on. But, like, he keeps saying to himself, like, oh, it's not serious. It's not serious. It's not serious. Derek is just and and then, like, when it becomes serious, he's like, what? <laughs> oh, dear. So then we'll just go, um, it cuts to Casey dreamily gazing down the hall at school. <sighs> and then Emily comes up to her and she's all like looking for Sam. <laughs> it's so Like, bad. really? Like, really? And Casey talks about how Sam was at dinner the night before, and it was really uncomfortable, but I think he was flirting with me, she says. No. And I'm like, please tell me she's saying this off a moment that wasn't shown on screen. Because yeah, because it was not shown. Like, no one, everyone there was like, hmm? <laughs> what she's referring to is what we saw in the first like couple minutes of the episode. That that was, no. no. I mean, it, <laughs> you mean when he spat on you? <laughs> If clueless Sam being a Derek's boy is flirting, okay. <laughs> Jesus. But then, you know, uh, Emily tells Casey that things happen really fast in their school. Like, people get together and break up fast. So she needs to ask out Sam soon. But Casey wants Sam to ask her out. You know what's great about this? is because Casey's always about feminism, equality, but she won't ask him out. She's like, no. Very true. I feel I like mean- with romance, she's very old-fashioned. Like, in, like, another episode, we see how she wants, like, you know, her boyfriend at the moment to be, like, all, like, chivalrous and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like, she's Miss Feminism as well. So it's just like, not that you can't be both, but it's just like, it's very unique that she has these two opposing viewpoints that is true you know so anyway yeah so she wants sam to ask her out and so emily says well then you're going to need to give him an opportunity to ask you out but it, you know it's obviously going to be hard since he's always around Derek. so and then casey's like you know if i ever get a chance to get sam alone and then i just love like what emily says here she's like we're like oh you're gonna jump on <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> this show, though that that was a good line, though I really enjoyed that line. Ugh. Emily was good in this episode too. <laughs> I can't even. So right after this, she goes to Paul's office. She <laughs> is writing Sam's name and like doodling it along with like butterflies and all this other crap, like on this like piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And she's just sitting there in Paul's office for like five minutes, just like doing this. Uh, and it's just like she's not even talking to Paul and Paul's just like so you know tell me about the guy and she's just like how do you know there's a guy and he's just like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what, what's what's Sam's last name <laughs> Richard that's what I was gonna like is she, is she writing like Mrs. Mrs. R- Casey Sam Richards <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Richards so, so when Casey tells Paul that he's Derek's best friend, he asks if Derek is cool with it. And Casey says Derek doesn't care what she does. You know, obviously, unless it's Sam. Obviously. S- obviously. Um, <laughs> but obviously she doesn't know that right now. So at the cafeteria, we go to like lunch, I guess. Casey goes into the cafeteria and she actually sees Sam by himself at this table. Uh-huh. And apparently Derek is trying to get a girl to buy him lunch. Like, oh my god. Why does no one buy me lunch? That's the real question. <laughs> I always have to buy my sister lunch. That's what I had to do today. I had to buy her lunch. I used to buy some of my friends lunch sometimes. But it wasn't, like, a constant thing. My friends don't love me, so they don't ever buy me lunch. And it makes me <laughs> sad. Like, my uh, my friends sometimes, like, they would forget their money or something. So, like, I would just, like, pay for it. But still, it wasn't something where it's like they went around asking people, oh, can you buy me lunch? Can you buy me lunch? Like, I'm wondering how he's doing this. Obviously, he's using a little charm to it. Yeah. But it's like, I'm wondering how he he can, I mean, I don't know. (laughs) Does he do this every day? (laughs) I mean, it feels like it. Oh my God. That seems a lot of work just to get lunch. Hey, man. Derek, just get a job. Derek gets. (laughs) 
Well, that's true. That food. <laughs> so Casey goes over to him and she asks him if he has any plans that weekend. And Sam and Derek have hockey tryouts or something. Like they're it was playing. Hockey, it was hockey pro- uh, playoffs. Oh, I thought they were saying tryouts. Okay, playoff. That makes more sense. Um, and ask if she's going to see them play. And she asks if he wants her there, since Derek thinks she's bad luck. And <laughs> I think Derek probably doesn't want her there, just because he's already too nervous. Probably. He doesn't need to have her there. And he doesn't need to have her there, because he'd be even more of a nervous wreck. Yeah. It's at that moment when they're talking that Derek comes into the cafeteria, and he immediately spots Sam and Casey talking. And it's a weird, like, look that passes over his face, like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> And at that moment, Sam is about to ask Casey out for Saturday night, presumably, Mm -hmm. uh, when Derek comes to the table, telling Casey to stop harassing his friend. (laughs) Derek is, like, right in her personal space as she gets up to leave. She, like, gets up and she has her binder and it, like, goes right into his, like, stomach and she has to, like, maneuver it away from him when she's leaving. Like, that was unnecessary. (laughs) A lot of things in this show is unnecessary. (laughs) Like, are we surprised? Then Sam then asks Derek if he can stay at Derek's place since their game is so early the next day. So he just wants to stay over. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a smart thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would make sense. So Derek asks if he wants to see a movie, but Sam obviously wants to hang out at the house. And he's like, oh, we can just, you know, stay at your house, you know, play video games. And, like, Derek sees, like, right through it, and he calls him out on it. And Derek says, though, like, oh, it's fine, since, like, you would never really go for Casey. Um, since, you know, he's a guy, and there's the male code. Oh, God. Yeah, and then Sam's just like, uh, yeah, I I love codes. (laughs) I love codes. It's my second favorite code. (laughs) What was was it after Morse code? Oh, my goodness. (laughs) And that's where he learns that, that's where he learns about the code, and the one mainly saying that guys can't date their friends' siblings. So step-siblings? Yeah, step-siblings count. Oh my. So, we're back at the house, and Lizzie goes up to George, and Lizzie says she made captain for soccer. They do this, like, little, like, handshake thing. Mm Mm-hmm. And Nora didn't even know she wanted to be a captain for soccer, but George did. And then Edwin comes around, and he claims that he has a girlfriend now, the same girl he had a crush on earlier. And George feels out of the loop there, but Nora knew. But one thing that's funny about uh, Edwin saying he has a girlfriend is that Derek comes over to Edwin to congratulate him and ask him if he got to first base yet. (laughs) This show is so dumb! (laughs) He's just like, oh, good, I was you get your first base. Like, no! I mean, that's better than tell asking if he got to any other base. I mean, true, but at the same time, I'm like, please, do not. <laughs> do not! I don't deserve don't, this. Uh, yeah. So, at that moment, there's a knock at the door. And Casey goes to answer it, and it's Sam. But Sam is ignoring her. Like, he's not really, you know, even looking at her. Um, and of course, as they're leaving, Sam still hasn't really, like, paid any attention to Casey being there. And of course, she's just all like, oh, Oh my God, Sam. Like, what's, what's happening? What are you doing here, Sam? (laughs) Samuel, what are you doing here? (laughs) Then we go to Nora and George in the kitchen. And they're talking about how they don't know their own kids. Like, you know, because Nora didn't know about Lizzie and George didn't know about Edwin or that Casey liked Sam because he just found out. Uh, (laughs) Like, ugh. These two. I mean, I get it. They have so many, like, kids in that house now. Yeah. And especially when one of them is so significantly younger, like Marty. Like, she's obviously going to dominate a lot of their time. And they might not pay attention so much to, like, Casey and Derek or even Lizzie and Edwin. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but, and they also have, like, two careers of their own and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I just keep remembering, like, when they, like, forgot Edwin and Lizzie at school and, like... <laughs> I know, it's so bad. <laughs> It cuts to uh, Derek and Sam coming in from playing basketball. Mm -hmm. 
and Derek and Casey start bickering about her talking because they come in and she starts just, like trying to like ask questions like more so to Sam than Derek. Derek's starting to get annoyed. And so he just mm-hmm. is just like, go get us some drinks. But she was like, I don't want to get you drinks. <laughs> so no. Sam offers to just get them drinks himself and leaves. Mm-hmm. So then Derek tells Casey to leave Sam alone because he's not interested. And she tries to play it off, and she was like, what are you talking about? I don't even like Sam. So unconvincingly. (laughs) And Derek tells her that everyone knows, even Marty. (laughs) Jesus. And then Casey asks Derek how he knows Sam is not interested in her. And Derek tells her it's because he's his best friend, and he can tell. Which is bullshit. So (laughs) Straight up bullshit, Derek. He's sabotaging. Mm Mm-hmm. So, Casey doubts Derek, which she should, Mm -hmm. and she's, like, saying she thinks that he has a problem with it, and that she's not going to leave Sam alone. Mm -hmm. And when she leaves to go into the kitchen to talk to Sam, oh my god, that face that Derek makes. Because at first, he's just, like, you know, like, trying to, like, laugh it off, being like, yeah, okay, well, you do your thing, you know. But then she leaves, and, like, his face immediately, like, sobers up and it's just like it's that's the psychopath serial killer face <laughs> it's like everything's cool and then you leave and then they're like hmm. well no it doesn't look it wasn't like a blank expression it was just kind of just like oh shit kind of like not even that like it was just kind of like i don't know like, it, like almost a sadness to it which is like not something you would necessarily think for two step siblings mm. you know what i mean yeah yeah, it's like it's like kind of like he's really dejected. Damn, why is this so deep, Derek? <laughs> Besides Damn, the Casey, fact that you're in why love don't with you her. Love so me. yes, so it's just like a very interesting face, and I tend to use it a lot in my fan vids when I make them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting face. I use it in all my fan videos, <laughs> and others do too. So Casey is in the kitchen with Sam. And he literally didn't even prepare any drinks. Um, he was in the fridge ready to take pizza after all that time being in the kitchen. Yeah. And he continuing to just kind of like ignore Casey. He's just like shrugging her off. And she calls him out on it. And she's saying he's treating her like Derek treats her. Which I don't think that's necessarily true. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like Sam is treating her with more indifference. Whereas yeah. Derek... He just annoys the hell out of her. You right. Like, I feel like he's even being worse than Derek. But, you know, Casey gets vulnerable here. When isn't she, though? (laughs) She's, like, always vulnerable somehow. She admits that at lunch, she thought he was going to ask her out on a date. Okay. And Sam asks why she thought that. Well, I don't know, because you were giving her hard eyes. <laughs> and then she says that she thought he liked her. And Sam tells her that he doesn't. And Casey obviously starts to get kind of emotional. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, oh, oh well, uh, you know, my, my bad. That's, that's, that's totally fine. Uh- <laughs> my bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. read it wrong. And Sam leaves. And Casey is dramatically watching him go. And then, (laughs) (laughs) while Derek is creeping in the background, he's obviously heard everything that happened. But, okay, so here's the thing. He looks super guilty and remorseful in that shot where he's, like, watching them, like, listening to them. Mm -hmm. Like, he looks like, oh, shit, they really like each other kind of moment. Yeah. But nothing happens after that until the end. Like, you would think from this point on, he would be like, you know what, maybe I should... But after this, like, he, he doesn't do anything to really help amend the situation at all. Mm-hmm. Like, something like that look would, like, suggest that maybe he would do something like that, like, a little bit earlier, but he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's Derek, right? Right, he's so selfish, but <laughs> he was kind of like, oh, I hate that I made them both sad. But oh, I don't want good. them to, like, be together. <laughs> but he's like, no. but that's good for me. <laughs> Good enough for me. So they're at dinner again, and Sam's there again because he's staying over. Again. And even Marty, and even Marty is like, "Sam's here again." 
And Sam says that he's there because he really likes the food. And Nora's like, oh, that's really sweet. And then George is like, yeah, because no one likes this food. Yeah. That's so mean. What is this family? They're always at each other's, like... <laughs> well, no one... <laughs> ever, and everyone's always hating on each other. Oh, my God. I just think it's... I just... I, George has some really good lines. That's just all I know. He it's does. funny. So, anyway. Again, Marty is just there to say, like, random shit to make, it, like, Casey and Sam uncomfortable. She says that she wants Casey to marry Sam. Like... <laughs> Uh, if I was, like, if I was Casey, I would have probably killed her by now. <laughs> I mean, probably, yeah. You know, after that little, like, uncomfortableness, Casey asks for someone to pass the peas. And then Sam starts to, but Casey says she's changed her mind. She doesn't want, <laughs> she doesn't want him anymore now. Oh my god, Casey. <laughs> so, Nora tells Sam that Lizzie is the captain of her soccer team. And mm. Sam, you know, he's all like, oh, that's great, you know? And then he, like, looks over at Casey and he's like, oh, do you play any sports? No, bitch, you should know that already. <laughs> and then Casey just like, oh, my God, the death glare in this, like, sentence. She's just like, no, I hate sports. She's like, did you uh, did you think I like sports? Because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to come to the hockey game? I hate hockey the most. <laughs> She's so yeah. rattled. She's yeah, because so Derek like, asked her if she's going to go to the game now, and she's just like, no. <laughs> oh, it's just... And, so like, Derek is, like, enjoying this. He's enjoying this. Like, despite his earlier look where he looked kind of, like, remorseful, he's enjoying this. He's just like, yes. Dude, Casey's just savage. <laughs> so, and then Edwin tells Sam that he's going out with that girl that they were talking about the day before. And, you know, Sam fist bumps him. And Casey's like, yeah, it's great. We're all happy for him. <laughs> and, uh, like, she stabs what is ever on her plate, like, really aggressively. <laughs> oh, Jesus. She's just, like, gonna break the fucking dish. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you know, like, you always see in, like, these shows or cartoons, they, like, stab something angrily and the, like, plate uh-huh. cracks in half. That's the whole Casey. table would have, like, split. With the way she's going with this. Like, oh my god. So, like, dinner is mad awkward and intense. Just to describe it in a few words. And then after dinner, you know, um, Casey is in her room, talking Lizzie's ear off once mm-hmm. again. As per usual, always, you're the greatest sister. Thank you for being here, Lizzie's, <laughs> Lizzie's like, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, you know, Casey says that she used to like Sam. Now she doesn't. She's over him. And, oh. like, Lizzie's looking at her like, bitch, please. Like, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> Fucking kill me. And she's me. just like, no, you still like him. And then she's like, yes, I do. <laughs> you, you read me, Lizzie. How did you do it? Oh, my God. But, okay. So, we're in Sam. Derek's room with Sam and Derek. And they're talking about... Derek's super freak sister and Derek's all like oh good thing you're not into her right right and then <laughs> and then Sam goes who says I'm not like that random backbone just like really jumped out right there and it's I was so like unbelievable there you go Sammy there you go but the then boy? but then Derek just like laughs it off and Sam retreats like he doesn't like follow it up can I just say, when you said that, you sounded very Philadelphian. How? Because you're like, there you go, Sammy, there you go. <laughs> you sounded so Philadelphian, it was great. <laughs> there you go, boy, there you go. <laughs> Give me another, another steak and cheese, it sounds, it sounds like something you say for, like, a sports event, so. I know, but I guess I guess my had Philly just came out of me <laughs> for that. There you go, boy. There you go, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I love it. <laughs> so anyway, Sam asks if girls know about the male code. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Derek looks nervous there because he made it's it bullshit. Up. Because it's bullshit. <laughs> like it's so bullshit. But apparently, one of the rules is to not speak of it with females. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah, that's one of the rules of the of the of the Malcolm. So oh. you know, 
But uh, anyway, so that's what happens. And then Sam and Derek go to play video games. Mm-hmm. And Sam is beating Derek. I think it's a hockey game they're it playing. It has to be because they're going about, like, scoring and stuff. Yeah. So Derek, like, you know, Sam's beating them. So obviously Derek wants to play a different game because he's he's a sore loser. He wants to play Babe Raider. <laughs> But that Which Sam, Sam is better be- at yeah. than Derek still. So it's like... So anyway, uh, passive-aggressively, Sam says that, well, it always has to be his way. That's and, what Derek wants, Derek gets. Yeah, and then Derek says that it's his house, his rules. Oh my god. So, hold on. So I had this happen to me when I was a kid. Oh okay? god. I once hung out with this person, okay? Mm-hmm. And when I would hang out at their house, they'd be like, "Well, it's my house, my rules." Like, so we had to do what they wanted to do. Ooh, but that then, when sounds like a bitch. Well, yes, but I was young, and you know. <laughs> anyway, so and then when they would come over to my house to play, I'd be like, "Oh, well, let's do this." They're like, "No, I want to do this," and I'd be like, "Well, I thought it was my house, my rules." And they're like, "No, I'm the guest, and the guest should always <laughs> pick." <laughs> that was like. Whoa, you can't have it both ways. Like, come on now. You still know this person? No, I mean, I haven't seen her in years. You should call her out and call her a fucking bitch. No, I mean, this was when we were, like, second, third grade. I bet you she's still the same. She lived down the street from me at the time. But, like, I haven't seen her in, like, almost ten years now. I just want to say she probably is the same thing. So if you ever saw her, you should be like, hey... Let's go to your house and watch TV. <laughs> but actually, let's not. And she'll be like, but my house! <laughs> <laughs> my rules! And you'll be like, no! <laughs> I, I I literally don't know. I mean, she wasn't as bad when we when I graduated, but... Slay her. I could see her still being somewhat like that. Fucking slay her. <laughs> so anyway, Derek and Sam start bickering. But then Derek gets a phone call from one of his girls. So Derek, um, he goes upstairs to take the call. And Sam goes in the kitchen and Casey's there. And Casey vows that they should just try to move on from the awkwardness. Since they'll be seeing a lot of each other. Since, you know, he's Derek's best friend and he comes over a lot. Mm. And then she leaves. Okay. So Sam goes to the fridge. And he goes and he sees a picture of Casey on the door. Okay. And then he just straight up takes it. He pockets that thing. Yeah, into, like, it's so creepy. Like, just randomly in the pocket, he's like, look at this. This is my treasure now. <laughs> this is mine. Like it's, like, it's freaking weird. Like, who the hell does that? I don't even want to know what he's going to do with it. We know what he's going to do with it. <laughs> we fucking know. Don't even try. <laughs> we know he's going to go home and do something. <laughs> Derek's going to be like, Sam, are you done in the bathroom yet? <laughs> are you done with the picture? <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> We're so bad. This is why our show is rated M for mature. Because <laughs> Ashley's so, yeah. a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So he's and he's a thief. He's a dirty perverted thief okay yeah. that, that's sam now it's always the quiet ones <laughs> i'm so dumb so okay so this must be a little bit while later lizzie is then in the kitchen with Nora and george and she's questioning them about you know their kids they have to like answer so many questions to see if they get them right they're like it's weird like questions like Who's their gym teacher's name? And like, like, you know what's weird is just that how clueless or brainless of a parent do you have to be to think this is a good idea? Let's take a quiz to see how bad we are at knowing <laughs> our children. Well, it's like it's one thing to get like their gym teacher's name wrong. Yeah, because that's like, like a teacher. It's just never a gym teacher. About. It's like whatever. And like even getting Marty's favorite color wrong is like understandable since like. In this episode, they make it seem like she changes her favorite color, like, all the time. Yeah. But they get Edwin's birthday wrong. <laughs> Day and year. Okay. Okay. And, and George is like, I didn't know there was going to be math in this. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, 
my sister doesn't even know my birthday. What? Like, Come on now. I, I know. I know everyone in my family's birthday, and then my sister's like, oh, you're this old, right? I'm like, no. She's well, like, I sometimes <laughs> get, like, I get ages wrong sometimes, but, like, I know people's birthdays. Like, well, she just, like, 100%, like, de-aged me, like, three years. <laughs> Well, like, I would take that. <laughs> like, I would take that 100%, but, like, no. <laughs> I am not. I, like, I wish. <laughs> I wish. So, yeah. And so, like, and plus, there's only 20 questions. So, like, how accurate could this possibly be? Yeah. But it's funny because Lizzie, like, they got a 2 out of 20. That's horrible. And she says, if in a, in a score less than 6, you're supposed to call a social worker. <laughs> Yeah, so it's time to call a social worker, you know? Oh my god. So, as they're doing this in the kitchen, Edwin is in the living room with Sam. And Edwin, since obviously now he's in a relationship, he he has advice to give to Sam. (laughs) Oh god. And it's actually, like, pretty decent advice. Because he's saying, like, he's telling Sam that he can't let Derek get in the way of his happiness. Mm Mm-hmm. That if if Derek was a good friend, he would step aside and, like, let, you know, Sam date Casey. Except he's never gonna do that because he wants her. <laughs> that is true, but people don't know that half of it yet. <laughs> but I'm just saying, we know the truth! <laughs> so, but obviously Sam doesn't want to break the mail code because it's gonna be, like, betraying his best friend, who they've been best friends since, like, kindergarten, I think it was. He's betraying his brother. Yeah. So he obviously is having conflicting thoughts. And then Derek comes down the stairs while Sam is going up the stairs. Automatically, Derek's like, well, where are you going? Gotta go brush my teeth. Gotta go brush my teeth. Where's your toothbrush? I'm gonna use yours. <laughs> yeah, ew. That's disgusting. Especially with our discussion from last time. Yeah. I was talking about how he has, like, all this, like, food and everything. Like, <laughs> no, do not. <laughs> So, Derek obviously has a feeling that Sam wants to go see Casey, so he keeps prodding Sam to tell him the truth and to make him move. And then Sam questions if they are 10 now, and if they're going to wrestle like they used to. Hell yeah. Um, But finally, Sam tells Derek that he wants to talk to Casey. And... You know, I, I find it funny what he says, like, because he's just like, you know, I've been thinking what Marty said, and I'm thinking about asking Casey to marry me. <laughs> Why is he listening to, like, a two-year-old? <laughs> well, he just listens to, like, a ten-year-old. I mean, like, Edwin, Edwin convinced him to go talk to Casey, basically. <laughs> this guy, I can't help, I can't help this man. This man can't be helped. <laughs> so anyway, um, so then, like, Derek's like, um... Oh, can I be the best man? And, like, welcome to the family. Ugh. And it's accompanied with, like, pushing. And then soon enough, they are full out, like, wrestling. And they're making so much, like, noise that Casey ends up coming downstairs to see what's going on. And, of course, like, Nora and George hear this, too. But they're just like, be careful! <laughs> like, from the... <laughs> are you on of housing? Yes, be careful of the lamp. Okay. <laughs> they're wrestling, and after they're, like, wrestling for a little bit, like, you know, Sam breaks free, and he's just like, you know, Derek, tell her about the mail code. And this is where Derek, like, turns to him and he's like, that's why we're wrestling? <laughs> Derek's like, what? I feel like, I- I'm very confused about why he thought they were wrestling. Yeah, like, what What? What reason do you think? Right, like, is he's like, that's why we're wrestling? Like, uh, specifically about the male code, is like, that's what he's fixated on? Like, that's what he thinks Sam's fixated on? Or does he think, like, they're wrestling, like, I- more for Casey in general? Like, it's just like... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, because, like, is that... Like, it's just, like, it's weird that he has that reaction, because with how the fight was built up, it was surrounded by, like, Casey. It's always going to be about Casey, though. Well, but right, but so, like, so what else would you think you were wrestling about? You weren't just wrestling to wrestle. You know, Derek's like, got to keep his secrets. You always got to throw them off the trail. Right, so, anyway, so he's all like, what? And Casey asks what the mail code is, and Sam tells her about the friends can't date sisters. And so Casey 
uh, she's livid, and she tries to go after Derek herself. Um, but Derek is smart. He deflects it. Yeah, he's like, don't blame me. And he's like, don't blame me. Sam is the one that listened to me. Well, apparently Sam will listen to anyone. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> He'll listen to a 10-year-old. He'll listen to, like, a 2-year-old. So, yeah. But that was that was really smart on Derek's end. Because it's, like, literally, like, he could be like, I say dumb shit all the time. He's the one that listened to me, though. <laughs> but, uh, and then wrong. Casey... Oh, no, he's not wrong. But anyway, so Casey yells at both of them, saying that she doesn't want to get in between a 10-year friendship between two idiots. Yep. Again, Casey's very on point this episode with she's her, like, clapbacks. She's savage. She's savage. These last two episodes. Like, I didn't realize, like, I realized, like, you know, she yelled a lot, but these last two episodes, she's been, like, really on point with her yelling. Yeah, she's it's good. like a respect level. Ruth. She's still dramatic, but... <laughs> Always. So, after a little bit of, like, moping, Derek obviously feels bad, and he tells Sam to talk to Casey. And my thing was that, like, he was like, I don't need your permission. And then Derek's like, apparently you do. Yeah. <laughs> like, no shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, you do, Sam. I mean, it's like, Sam's this is the whole reason why this happened. Huh? He's just a dummy. I know. Like, Casey, you could do so much better. So, anyway, Sam goes to talk to Casey... And oh my god, did you listen to the song that was playing what as, like, it? the build-up? Okay, I just can't. I forgot to, like, mention earlier on in the podcast, you know, when they're, like, having dinner or something, and then randomly Casey's outfit changes completely? I didn't notice that. Yeah, like, they're having dinner, and then she goes to talk to Lizzie in her room, and then her outfit, like, completely changed. Did like, she just change to, like, um... I thought it was going to be, like, her pajamas, but I'm like, that's yeah. kind of, that's not it at all. This is, like, jeans on and a different shirt entirely. And she's like, this is my after-dinner look. <laughs> this is my, um, oh, what the hell? This is my Mad at Sam post-dinner look. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. Like, I can't. Hold on, let me see if I can, if you can hear this. Hold on. Do you hear it? Kind of. Is someone talking or something? Oh, Sam. What is Sam saying? But do you hear the song? No, I can't hear it. Oh, that's the whole point of it. But it's just like a bop bop beat up, but like it's like kind of like dramatic though. <laughs> it's so bad. I want to know the name of this song because it's just like really funny. Oh shit! Like what the hell? But yeah, it's just like it's it's just adds more drama to an already dramatic like ep- like um scene. Mm-hmm. And oh my god. But yeah, like, it's just, <sighs> and then, you know, he says, like, I shouldn't have listened to Derek. Uh, I should have listened to Edwin. <laughs> I should have listened to the fetuses. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Casey's like, you talk too much. And then she kisses him. Oh my god, that scene, it was so cringe. I was like, eh. <laughs> And then Edwin, Lizzie, and Marty are creepily watching from the attic staircase. And they're just like, yeah! Talkers. I know. Got a whole scene. So with the friend. episode ends with Casey, Derek, and Sam all sitting at the dinner table eating milk and cookies. Yeah. And Derek's at the head of the table, like, where George usually sits, and he's looking kind of miserable as uh, Casey and Sam are, like, staring lovingly at each other. And um, Derek requests that Casey and Sam don't act like boyfriend and girlfriend in front of him. Boy doesn't want to be hurting. Okay? Okay. He's saying, like, and whoever is playing footsie with me, please stop! Yeah, but, like, which side? That's the thing, like... Who was both it? Sam <laughs> and Casey say sorry. I know, so he was both being footsied from both sides. But hey, Casey played footsie with Derek. It's that's the only point that matters. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I I like that episode. It's it's very dramatic, and like you start to see more of like this jealous kind of Derek. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean. You know, I think it was more Daisy than I think some of the other episodes that were supposed to be Daisy. Like, you remember? Yeah, there are some ones that were pretty bad. So, we have a few questions. Um, In this episode, George and Lizzie have a secret handshake, and Nora knows about Edwin's crush and Marty's favorite color. Does this mean Nora has made attempts to bond with Derek? 
what do you think they would do together? Um, oh. She's like, I could see her taking him to a feminist lecture <laughs> or something, and he falls asleep. <laughs> he would. He probably would. She probably would try to, especially like right after, like she gave him like the feminine mystique thing. No, it was the the fe- the feminesto. Or whatever, yeah, the female manifesto. She like yeah. So I could see her like being like, oh Derek, since you were so like you know into that, like how about I take you to this like feminist meeting? And he's just like, oh, gay. Uh. Like, you would do. She'd be like, there'll be girls there, and he'll be like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like I could see something like that happening, obviously, but um. I could see Nora maybe trying to make attempts to, you know, um, know Derek. But I think her way of going about it would be more subtle. Like, I feel like he might be, like, sitting watching hockey and maybe, like, she sits on the couch yeah, with him. What, and, like, she just kind was. of, like, asks him questions in between, like, commercial breaks or something. Mm-hmm. Like, that's nothing that's too intrusive. But, like, something just, like, a little bit just to see, like, you know, how he thinks and everything. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, they don't know too much about each other. Because, like, I don't think she knows that much about Derek. As for George, I don't think he probably has made too much of an attempt to know Casey. um, Besides from what we've seen in earlier episodes. Not because he doesn't want to know Casey, but because he's probably scared of her. I mean... I'm scared of her. Because <laughs> she's a psychopath. Yeah. Sociopath. Yeah, like, my TED Talk will tell you why I'm afraid of her. <laughs> but anyway, like, I just think that, like, because she's just, like, dramatic, you know, loud teenage girl, he's really out of his element there. So he's just like, you, you know, you do your own thing. If you need me, you can come to me. But, like, I'm not asking for it. <laughs> And I think, like, with Edwin, he probably... It was probably, like, the right place, right time. Same with Lizzie and George. Where it's, like, they had this, like, thing to tell. And, like, the other was there. So they just told it to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I don't know if there was, like, necessarily, like, Lizzie went to George to tell him this. Like, it's just that, like, she became captain. Or she wanted to become captain. And, like, you know, George happened to be there when she, you know, had this happen. So, that created, like, a little bond. I ain't gonna lie, but during that whole monologue you had, I literally zoned out. <laughs> I'm like, you're like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, totally. I'm like, what just happened? Thanks, thanks, Vanessa. I'm so sorry. Thanks, just thanks. I'm yep, just you know, staring mm-hmm. at the screen. Mm-hmm. I was just staring at the screen. I'm like, (laughs) what's happening? I'm talking about them, like, you know, like, I'm just saying, like, Lizzie, like, she probably didn't tell George that she wanted to become captain because she wanted to tell George. It's just that, like, George was around when that information, like, happened. Mm -hmm. So then, like, after she got more information on it, she went to George again because he was there the first time. I just think it's because Nora's not a sports person and George is. Maybe, but it's not like Nora wouldn't support her either. Yeah, well, she, I guess. And plus, like, with, like, with Edwin, someone. like, his dad can only give him so much, like, you know, advice. And he probably yeah. wants to know it from, like, a female perspective. So, Maybe. like, it makes sense that he would go to her about that. I don't know if it was necessarily Nora and George reaching out to those kids specifically. But just, like, kind of, like, they're there at the right time, right place. Like, it happens, like, organically like that. You right. And and then after, another one, I said, after this episode, also this episode is a turning point for Daisy. It seems generally accepted that this is the first time Derek has to confront his feelings for Casey, whether he realizes what they mean yet or not. And Paul seems to already be shipping Daisy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Even Sam can see through the mail code is ridiculous, even though I don't think he realizes why. What do you think of all of this? But yeah, like we were saying, like, the reason why they were fighting earlier, it's very clear. It's Daisy. It's Casey. They're fighting over Casey. Um, I think someone sent an ass to me not long ago saying, like, it seems like Daisy is very one-sided. Like, when you watch the series, 
that it just seems like Derek's the one that likes Casey and Casey's just like whatever. And my mm-hmm. thought has always been that Casey likes Derek too. I don't She's just better at hiding it. <laughs> one, she might be better at hiding it, or two, she's really just like repressing it. Because she's such a goody two shoes, because she follows the rules. Because, you know, she doesn't like to do anything outside of the norm. Whereas Derek breaks the rules. But, you know, that's just part of his way of living. So, like, him to accept it is a lot easier. But let's be real here. The real reason she's better at hiding it is because she's hiding her psychotic she's behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another clue in my TED Talk. Please stay <laughs> tuned for that. It, it's coming along. Not really, but it will... But yeah, I think I think this this episode definitely was a, a turning point for Derek, because it, I think the idea of him of Casey and Sam always bothered him. But it wasn't really until this episode where he saw like the possibility of it happening, where he was like, "Oh shit! Like something's different here." Like you can be annoyed at your best friend dating someone, but like it's different when you have a, like a different level of feeling towards it. And this is what it felt like here. And it wasn't like because she's his sister. Mm-hmm. Did you zone out on that one too? No. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to say about this episode? I just want to say I want to thank all my fans. The two people who are my fans. <laughs> I respect you. You respect Because them. everyone else, everyone else loves Ashley. No. And you guys love me. So I respect you. No. I appreciate you. They don't just love me. Like, no. I'm just saying they do, but you know what? It's true. I'm more easily accessible to talk to. Well, they could say for Vanessa. Well, that's And I'll true. be like, Yes. This is for me. If you want questions specifically towards Vanessa, just put for Vanessa. <laughs> yeah, make me feel ha- loved. But bring on season dough. Yeah. So, I know we just came back from a couple week break. <laughs> but we're probably going to go on another couple week break. Maybe even longer, I don't know. Um, just so that there's space in between seasons. Um, I actually might move soon. So yeah, I, it depends when I move, if everything's working when I move. If you can afford internet when you move. Well, I can probably afford an internet, but yeah, it's just like, if when that's gonna get, like, fixed and shit. <laughs> oh my god, are you gonna get, like, cable? How are you gonna survive without watching your shows? I'm gonna get Hulu Live, or YouTube Live. I'm not gonna get cable, I'm just gonna get one of them. What the fuck is YouTube live? It's like live TV that you pay for through YouTube. Oh! Mm Mm-hmm. And Hulu has the same thing. So I'm gonna get either one of them. I think YouTube has, like, an actual, like, DVR-type system. So, like, and I don't think Hulu has that. But Hulu comes, obviously, with, like, other shows. But it's just, like... I don't know. I'll have to see. Alrighty. But still, yeah, so it depends on that stuff. Um, okay. But, yeah, and then I think when we start next season, so I think we may start doing every other week instead of every week. Yeah, because we cry. <laughs> Just because, like, it would give me, like, essentially longer to edit videos. Yeah, and it gives us times to, like, figure shit out. And, like, it's just exhausting because, like, I feel like we do this during the beginning, like, the middle of the week. I it takes me a while to like edit and then it starts all over again. And it's back in, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like in some days I just come home and I'm like, no. <laughs> yes. That's me. I'm like you're like, it's time. Are we doing it? And I'm like, let me perish. So hopefully with that kind of schedule we'll actually upload everything quicker. <laughs> Cause we won't feel the need yeah. to like have a burnout like break. <laughs> yeah, every other yeah. day. <laughs> I feel that. So, yeah. So, that's just what's on task for, you know, the next season. Hopefully, we'll have an intro song, maybe, next season. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal for next season. I'm calling you out, people. I'm calling you all out. Make us a theme song. Or find us one. 
Shut up, Ben Sounds. <laughs> you ruined it all. All right. I feel like we should just steal it because he'll never find out. <laughs> he don't know. Don't know what? He won't know that we took it for a podcast. <laughs> In the, so like, he has it, like, copyrighted on YouTube. He has a tracker. Alright. That's true. Alright, well, that's it for today. Bye-bye. Goodbye forever.